Cody Walters off a dominating performance tonight of Samuel. I thought it was dominating. Coach Greenlee, he said uh, he's trying to be politically correct about it. Told me that he's tough and you didn't dominate him. Dominating match tonight. Great uh, low single shot to start off the match. But uh, third time wrestling Sam. Third time's a charm. Is it harder in college to beat somebody three times? It's harder, but you're like, you practice the same things all the time. It's very consistent. So it was like, I kind of knew what to go into it. It's all about the attitude, how you take the match. So I don't look at it any different. I don't pretend, I don't even think about how we wrestle before I go in it. That's the time of wrestling and whatever happens, happens. All right, you're a Chanel Firebird. You're from like uh, Northfield or Macedonia? I'm Macedonia boy. Macedonia. Coach Anders, he's from Macedonia. Yes, he is. Uh, disrupt the road, though. Um, actually, they're closing your school. How do you feel about that? It's actually very upsetting. Like, I've been a part of Chanel since I was six years old. So, being a part of something for so long, having so many great memories there, working so hard, so many blood, sweat, and tears in that school, in that room, and just to see it go away is just very upsetting. Yeah, I talked to a lot of old Chanel guys like uh, Anthony Ralph, you know, a guy you've yeah. probably dealt with a lot. Oh, yeah. And those guys, uh, Ed Hamlin was a, a teammate of mine here, but when you see a tradition like that, and now it's going to be gone. Well, you know, what do you talk to uh, about uh, old Chanel grads about? What do you guys, what's what's the biggest thing you guys are going to take away from? Now your school's done, but what's the biggest memory you think you have? Um, Just uh, Graham Cago was the biggest, honestly. He stuck around for so long, won so many titles. He And we all, honestly, we, uh, we came, went in as rest, trying to be wrestlers and came out as family. So, I mean, I gained a lot of family members out of that at St. Peter Chanel High School. All right, you uh, you had a, a great win. Well, actually, you got slammed in a match you were dominating. That was a bizarre slam, by the way, but a slam nonetheless. Um, match, I thought you were, you were cruising. You got a takedown there at the end of the period. Then you're on top. Gutches, tell me, walk me through that whole situation and waking up. He stands up. He tripods up with you on his back, yeah. and he slams you backwards. What do you remember that? To be totally honest, I, uh, I remember putting a boot in. And after that, I don't, I don't really remember. I remember like he started building up, and then I was out, and then I remember waking up, and they were asking him, where are you at? And I was like, a gymnasium. Not Reno. <laughs> you yeah. couldn't tell him Reno. I said gymnasium, and I was, uh, I, I kept trying to wrestle Greenleys, uh, and the ref was like, you're done, and I was like, no, I'm still going, and because I, I, I don't like to win like that, but honestly, I didn't know. It, it hurt, and people keep saying I was stalling and stuff, but it's like 12 seconds into the period, I just put a boot in, so. Yeah, it was it was kind of a bizarre thing, and a lot of people haven't seen it. It might be something that goes to the rules committee, actually. But um, great start to the year. You got, you were like 17-0 at one point, 19-0, I think, something like that. Uh, 20, 22 or 22 no, 20, and 0, 20 and 0. 20-0 going into the scuffle. Seventh place finish at the scuffle? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, what do you take from that? Taking a couple losses at the scuffle, but actually, you know, coming back and placing. What do you take from that, and, and how do you build on the season from that? I took it as a, uh, last year I went 0-2 at that tournament, losing to Ed Root first round and uh, uh, kid Stephen Dottie from Virginia. And I went in and I, it motivated me. I, I, I was scared of Ruth and I never let it happen again. I trained with Hanson almost every day and I went in the scuffle. I wanted to place at that tournament. I wanted to be the champ at that tournament. I knew it would be hard, a lot of good competition. But going in there, I lost to Matt Brown. And I looked at it as like, hey, maybe I needed that loss. And I uh, won a few more to place and lost to John Fossey in a 3-2 match, which I wanted to win and I think I'll get next time, but uh, I just got to keep battling, battling, and then I ended up placing seventh. And I learned that I can be there, I can be at the top, and I think I, I was always told I wasn't that good. I just, you know, I had heart, but now I think I'm pretty good and I think I can win and be at the top of uh, 174 in the nation. Does, does it bother you, uh, the, the lack of respect in the rankings? No, no. I definitely use it as motivation, and uh, I keep pushing myself every day in the room. I honestly don't even pay attention to the rankings. I was never even predicted to win it in high school by the Brakeman or anything. I just look at it as motivation. I have to beat who's in front of me. I don't care what they're ranked. That's how I take it. What do you got to do between now and March to you know, win the Mid-America Conference Tournament and, and get on the podium and be an All-American? I just got to keep training, keep doing what I'm doing, keep my grades strong. It's the biggest important thing to me. And then uh, if I keep doing the work, it'll just come. You got anything else for me, Cody? No, thank you. Hey, thanks for the time. Good luck moving forward, bud. I appreciate it.